All right, we're going to go ahead and try this again. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try interviewing Merrill Rutledge again, who's also uh, running for governor of the state of Virginia. Super, uh, you know, we, we tried last night. We had a couple connection issues with Merrill. Um, I will say from what I heard, I was very impressed with Merrill. Um, as if you didn't, if you missed it earlier, I interviewed Amanda Chase, Senator Amanda Chase. I interviewed um, Mike Cherry. I interviewed Mike Dickinson. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and interview uh, Merrill Rutledge, who's running for governor. Let's see if we can get... Uh, get this going here. We're going to go ahead. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I just sent an invite to uh, Merrill Rutledge. He's running for Virginia State Governor. We got a lot of great governor candidates. I have to say, just fantastic governor candidates. A lot of governor candidates. You know, hopefully that is a sign of things to come. I'm a little bit chilly. I'm going to put this hat on. Uh, hey, hey, Paul. It's good to see you again. We have just had a night of interviews. Um, we just interviewed, starting with the Senator Amanda Chase, moved on to Mike Dickinson, then Mike Cherry, and now we're going to interview. All right, excellent. So if you're in here, uh, Merrill, which you are, there's a little button on the bottom that will allow you to um, ask to join. I'll take this off a little bit more professional. It'll ask you to um, join. You have the option. So it's there. You just have to find it. I can't actually send an invite asking you to be a part of the video, but you can... Um, you can ask, so you, you, you'll just send an invite, Meryl, uh, try, try and, uh, see if you can find it. It's there. Uh, just like we did last night, hopefully Meryl's here running for governor of the state of Virginia. So that's fantastic. Um, and, and I only spoke to Meryl briefly last night, um, and for someone who doesn't have like a huge amount of experience, well, sometimes that's a good thing. I was I was fairly impressed with Merrill. He had a lot of good fire, a lot of good energy, very good. Um, so Merrill, just look for look for that um, uh, that button. Oh, look at that. That makes it go bright. What the heck? That's like, uh, that's like, uh, it's like a nuclear blast right before, right after the nuclear blast. Holy cow. Okay. Uh, it, this is like nuclear blast and then the mushroom cloud. Uh, Meryl, um, we're, we're here. There's a button on the bottom, Meryl. Um, there's a button on the bottom that will you, you'll be able to um, ask to to be a part of the video. I can't send it. You have to send it. Let me see. I I can't. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to to send it. I can't. Ask, you'll you'll have to I see comment and share there's gotta be let me see let me see what I can do here Ugh. there's gotta be a way for you to request I mean we we did it last night. Uh, so Zach says, um, okay, there we go. Wait a second. Here we go. We got it. We did it. We figured it out. We beat technology. Here we go. I just sent you a request to bring you on. So just take a look, Meryl. It's somewhere there. It's going to pop up. We're going to do it.
We're going to figure it out. We're going to overcome technology. Hopefully we have a better signal than last night. That would be great. Yeah, you pretty much have to use your phone. Yeah. Hopefully you're connected to Wi-Fi. That would be great. Uh, I figured they had really good Wi-Fi at the uh, Senator Chambers because um, when uh, we interviewed Amanda tonight, she had a nice little space, good connection. So uh, from the live video guest. Okay. Let's try this again. Hello, Sandy. Glad you made it. We uh, we interviewed Amanda Chase, Mike Dickinson, then Mike Cherry, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and interview uh, um, uh, Merrill Rutledge. Uh, getting ready for this Sunday, which is going to be a big a big day this Sunday. Uh, it'll be a good time. Um, Meryl, oh, here we go. There we go. Hold on. Yes. Here we go. We yes. finally getting this together. We did it. Wow. We did it. This is we did it. this is a struggle for this one, but <laughs> technology is crazy. Um, go up this. All right, Meryl. So uh, we have good connection. That's awesome. Um, we'll just start over from last night because we have we have everyone here. Uh, getting ready for the forum this Sunday. I like to do something a little bit more casual. Um, can you, we have a question from the audience. Let me, let's go ahead and start with that. Could, uh, Meryl, what do you think is marijuana a good investment for the Commonwealth? It's a great investment. No doubt about it. Over 12,000 jobs ready to go. Um, too bad the Democrats won't wait until 2024 to get it really going. I want it done immediately. Um, this is going to be a breakthrough for our mental health services, different types of treatment that people need, whether diabetes or pain. We're trying to fight the opiate epidemic, try to win this war on drugs, and make sure people have a second chance to get their life together because a lot of people who are on opiates, a lot of them are victims of crime, whether it's pedophilia, rape, things that would cause PTSD in certain cases, like talking about it. But the major thing about this is the fact that we need the tax revenue. We are missing over $300 million per year in tax revenue, probably a lot more because of Northam and their laziness. The fact of the matter is marijuana should have been been legal and we should automatically have had these drugs, for, especially for children with epilepsy, going through seizures. There's so many benefits to marijuana. You know, I could talk about that all day, but the fact of the matter is right now, we have a huge hole that people are not seeing in our budget. And the fact is we got to start plugging those holes. We need to start increasing police salary, which marijuana proceeds can do, teacher salaries. It's so much that can be done. We need to get the farmers another crop, especially because they are hurting also. So we're looking at the benefits and this is going to be groundbreaking. I see even crime going down by the legalization of marijuana. So I'm looking forward to it being legal and of course reaping the benefits that everybody in the Commonwealth of Virginia can enjoy and see as prosperity and opportunity. Um, you know, and, and I, people talk to me about marijuana all the time, and I have kind of an interesting viewpoint on it. Um, disclaimer, I smoked my fair share in high school, and hey, maybe a little, little bit in college, but at that point I was kind of growing out of it. I don't do marijuana as a public safety officer. I'm disbarred from doing it, and that means a lot to me uh, about being um a, a firefighter EMT, so I don't do it. What When people ask me about marijuana, I have a simple thing that I say. Um, I say to them, is marijuana good for you? Probably not, but neither is alcohol, and I certainly have my drinks. 
Um, I have my cocktails in the evening. I'm not afraid to say that. And um, I think that it is a great, a huge tax revenue. Um, you can definitely make some taxes from it. And, it, and just like alcohol, uh, I don't want to defer to, to, to saying that, but it, you know, it, it's, it's, it, there's a lot of potential there. And I have invested in marijuana stocks who has it lately um in the, in the years so um yeah um excellent so we already have we already have some questions for you looks like th that that question's fired up some people let me get through some of these questions real quick we got a great connection um so the purpose of this is to get to know you on a more casual level so check this out me i'm in a t-shirt you know, it's casual, casual questions on the uh, forum this Sunday. It's not going to be on a casual basis. It's going to be serious, all the cameras, all the people. Um, I might even dress up a little bit and look respectable. Uh, so we'll we'll get ready for Sunday. But let's get to know you on some more personal questions. I'm going to ask the same questions I asked Senator Amanda Chase. I asked uh, Mike Cherry. Um, so tell us about yourself, whatever you want. I, it doesn't matter what it is. Just tell us about yourself, whatever you feel compelled to. Who are you? Okay, for everybody to know about me, I'm the governor with the street smarts as well as the book smarts. That's why I tell everybody. I'm from Irvington, New Jersey, was raised there up until I was 10 years old until Democrats destroyed the city. It used to be beautiful. It used to be able to walk down the street without somebody trying to rob you, beat you up, or a drug dealer. All of that changed after the Democrats took power off the normal spin. We're going to do better health care, better education, better schools, all the normal you know, pitch lines that Democrats run. All we saw was the complete opposite, higher taxes, more crime, pretty much everything that we are seeing now here in Virginia that we are trying to stop. Me, on the other hand, I'm a voice for those who are silent. I'm a First Amendment champion. I believe nobody should ever be censored. And I'm fully on board for making sure we find the big tech companies until they get that point. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I graduated from Norfolk State University with a bachelor's degree in political science and pre-law. And after I got out of school, I started working with watchdog groups as well as civic groups like the United um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters Organization, the Children of the Sun. Phi Delta Psi Fraternity Incorporated is my fraternity. I uh, was also um, very helpful in making sure the first youth leadership conference actually happened at an HBCU called Norfolk State University, which is my school. So that's what I'm very famous for. But also, I've been up against state, local, and federal government. I'm familiar with the good old boy system. I have a diary online that's called MyrtleTRutledge.wordpress.com. You can see my fights from being a generational Democrat to being independent and a full-blown Republican. So you actually see the stories. You don't see just Mr. or Mr. Perfect or anything like that. What you see is how my life was from the beginning to the end. And you will see that and know about that as this campaign goes on further. So I just wanted to give you all some, a chance to get to know me and know I'm pro-business, pro-gun. And, of course, I'm all about making sure our criminal justice system is fixed and making sure our family courts is no longer a place where they sell our kids. And at this time frame, we got to give our parents more control of their household and bring the parents back in and make sure the kids know exactly that we are here to lead well that's a fan fantastic answer and and i really appreciate you saying the generational democrat thing my grandparents are democrats but they when they think of democrat they think of the time of, of uh roosevelt and kennedy and so um and my mother which who is ultra conservative single mother raised me i was the i was an only um when I was very young, was a Democrat. She worked for Bill Clinton's campaign. And then somehow along the way, she changed to become a Republican and raised me and teach me about guns and conservativeness, God. Um, I am also, as people might say, my last name's Ignacio. Some of my family came from Mexico. Um, and so even to this day, I hate it. I really, it really bothers me. I, I, I'll meet Hispanic people who say, oh, you're Hispanic, you gotta vote Democrat. 
I, I really, that really upsets me a lot because it's like saying the color of my skin or my last name takes away my entire voting right. Like I can't think outside of that. It really bothers me. So I really relate to that and I like that. Before I ask you the next question, I actually was speaking to Britt Ross, uh, who is extremely well known. She's been a campaign manager for major campaigns, E.W. Jackson, um, uh, McGuire, uh, I, uh, Atkins. I mean, she's been all over the place. And, and we were actually talking about you um, and uh, doing an interview. Uh, my question is, uh, this is just an off the script question. And I love to ask off the script, off the script questions. You have, you're very well spoken for someone. Ha have you held political office before? No, I didn't want to. To be honest with you, I was more effective by being a private citizen than I ever was by being an elected official. I've changed policies whether, no matter where I went. You know, I'm all about giving out a problem, but also a solution to issues. And I'm pretty much what you call somebody who's not scared of nobody. So uh, yeah. I love it. You're just, you're very confident. That's excellent. It's just, usually you see that in someone who's been established, but it's very, very good, endearing quality. All right. Absolutely. I think people are just tired of the politicians. They're yeah. tired of the drama that's going on. And I'm here to make sure that drama ends one way or the other. So it's going to be a fight moving forward and I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. All right. So um, part of what I'm asking is my questions are totally not um, supposed to lead into any of the questions that you would encounter in the forum. However, and this is the same thing I said to all the other candidates, the news calls me a gun rights activist, which bothers me because I really don't feel that I am. And it bothers me that I'm labeled that just because I'm pro Second Amendment. That, you know, nowadays, if, you, if you're remotely Second Amendment, suddenly you're an activist. Okay, fine. I'll own it. But I got to ask a Second Amendment question. So it's going to be similar. I've told all the other candidates. I told Amanda Chase tonight. And it's going to be some. So tell us why you are the Second Amendment candidate. Because, number one, I recognize our right to defend ourselves, but I also understand restraining orders ain't good enough. Uh, with store owners who got looted and robbed should have had immunity during that time frame to defend their store with confidence and know that the state's going to back them. I'm a constitutional carry guy. I don't, I don't believe in fees for permits or anything like that. Once you have a gun and in legal possession of that firearm, you shouldn't be prosecuted just for the mere possession. And a lot of people are not. It really depends on how the judge feels about it. And right now, we got to fix that. Um, I want a state-recognized gun. I want a self-defense board, which actually reviews self-defense claims before it makes it to a grand jury for merit or for prosecution. This way, it allows gun owners as well as self-defense experts to review claims where a grand jury or a jury is not familiar with that type of law. A lot of prosecutions and convictions came from emotional decisions, not looking at reasonable fear of somebody's life. I believe in the enhanced stand your ground law, which gives gun owners and those who use self-defense qualified immunity. The same type of protection that police officers get in a justified shooting, we should use that same discretion for private citizens. The major thing we need to start telling people is without guns, you're going to have socialism. Without guns, you have no means to protect yourself. And I also plan on making sure the churches know we're going to stay out your business. If you have security with guns and all that other stuff, that's your business. But this is the point. I'm not going to make a law or even restrict anybody's gun rights. Any kind of gun control law is dead on arrival with me. And I'm going to guarantee you that. One more thing, repeals is not good enough because all it does is give us the same gun control laws that we already have. We need to make sure there's extra protection. So what I decided to do, I'm the only candidate doing it and somebody else decided to copy me. I'm going to pardon anybody who violates Governor Northam's gun control laws as long as it's not a felony and commission of a felony, in other words but just for having a magazine or 
whatever ammo that you want, we're going to get out of that type of situation. I'm from the country, and we all know how we grew up in the country, going hunting, teaching our kids how to hunt and all that other stuff. We're going to get Virginia back. And we're going to do it the right way with conservative leadership and somebody who's bold enough not to be politically correct. Hmm. That's some good stuff. Uh, I got to tell oh, you, yeah. um, it's it's a strong thing uh, for me. And, and you sound like you, you're strong on the issue and you, you know what you're doing. And I can tell that you have some seriousness behind it. Because I got to tell you, being, it, being that I, I've spoken to a ton of candidates i can tell when they're bsing their way out around the subject and they're trying to pretend like they're strong but i can tell that you're strong on it so thank you for that those stances absolutely because i've just seen too many patriots that's locked up for using their gun to protect someone me i'm a hand-to-hand -hand combat type of guy if i pull out a gun i won't hesitate to use it i'm not here for it to be staged or do gimmicks or just walk around with a firearm. My whole point is I want people to know when you have a gun, you have a right to use it and you're going to be protected, especially if the situation meets that type of force. The fact of the matter is no more apples to oranges prosecutors. I'm your insurance plan. If you get screwed over, guess what? Merle Relish has your back and won't care about how they feel about it. That pardon be right there on there, on this, on this way. And you could go back to defending your country, your family, your God and your home. And I'm also a castle doctrine type of person. We got to get that into law. And like I said, if they don't like it, oh, well, the pardon's going to be ready. It's about time we use it for our constitutional rights against mm -hmm. unconstitutional orders and mandates and no more red flag laws. The only way your gun gets taken is through due process of law, through a conviction, through the courts. We will not be taking anyone's guns. And if you smoke marijuana, trust me, I plan to make sure that question is off the application. You can have pot and guns. It's time for the grown-ups to take over Richmond. And that's exactly what I plan to do. Fantastic. I know we're, you're going to get a lot of support on those answers. Fantastic. Very strong. Um, so uh, these these following two questions are more to help me because this is something I commonly encounter. Okay. It's my privilege because I get to ask candidates. So I'm going to get to ask candidates questions that help me. What do you say to the disenfranchised young people? I'm asking you this because you know, I'm 35. I feel old. Some people say it's young, but I deal with a lot of younger people. Um, and they're just tired. They, they, they want change. They want to get involved, but they also don't. It's I, what help me help them. What would you, what, how can you help me as chairman? I'm trying to get the younger people. I've done an okay job getting young people involved in the tea party. How, what can I say to them, Merrill? You you tell me. Help me out. Well, one of the number one things, I always bring it back to when I was young and how somebody talked to me and reached through me, and they gave me a lot of tough love, some things you don't want to hear when you're young, but you respect it once you see that situation meets the actual advice that gives you, you know, comfort and hope. The fact of the matter is our young people are scared now. Mental health services is gone. The schools is closed. They are confused and getting the biggest miseducation on the route north of them. The fact of the matter is we got to tell them we are going to fix this. We got to be the leaders now. We have to tell them we are going to take those masks right off. We are going to move on with life. But the thing is, we got to have an expectation of them. The same way, when I mowed the lawn, right, I don't get paid unless I finish that lawn, right? We got to make sure they had their goals set, just like us. When I was young, my mom said, you got to do your homework before you could go out to play. The fact is, we can't be scared to be the parents and the leaders of today and the mentors. And that's what they are lacking right now. Right now, so many people are so confused trying to find out their identity instead of just be happy with who they are and encouraging them to fulfill your dreams and don't give up because there's enough people telling them to give up. They got enough animals out there, pedophiles, rapists, drug dealers, and more that is all advertising what the devil wants. And we got to always make sure we continue to put God first and we never give up on our kids. Because the one thing we have to know, 
They are going to be our future. And it's time for us men and women to step up and start having the tough conversations that we've been avoiding for quite some time. They need to know about their constitutional rights sooner than later and know the history before it's erased by the Democrats. And the only way we can preserve what we have left of responsibility and accountability is to stop pointing the fingers at others because that's what they see right now. They see the grown-ups, hey, blame this person, blame that person. You know what? It's about time for us to hold ourselves accountable for what's going on, and then we'll start seeing the youth follow suit. So we got to start first fixing ourselves and making sure that message is sent home and making sure our kids, before they walk out that door, know that they have a responsibility and accountability to make sure they become the best that they can be. And that's exactly how we get that message over to you. We just got to go back into history and remember where we came from. And we came from the streets. That's excellent. And yeah, yeah, we did. So, uh, mm -hmm. When you say we came from the streets, are you talking about like the Revolutionary War or, or what do you what do you mean? Everything was fought in the streets. That's the right. That we got to win it that's back yeah, in the streets. Right. We can't be scared to go to the projects or to the ghetto no more than we should be scared to go uptown to the rich neighborhoods. We got to start telling you, hey, we are in this together. There's no such thing as your race makes you better than anybody because yeah. I got black friends, Chinese friends, all types of friends of different backgrounds. They have my back before any supremacist will ever have mine. And the fact of the matter is, we used to never tolerate somebody coming into our house, especially our kids talking about, we're going to burn down your house if we don't get what we want. What happened during that time frame? We got butt whooped from that door all the way to the driveway and ran some miles. And that's what they need to do. They need to be out there exercising, doing something constructive. Like I said, if you watch Lean On Me, that's the type of governor I plan on being. Like Crazy Joe, fix the schools and fix the youth to actually believe. That's exactly what I plan on doing. That's why I plan on making sure I talk to you every single week that I'm governor to make sure they know I'm expecting the best out of you. And that's what we need more of. Real leadership, less of the people that just talk about it. Excellent. I have one final question. Um, and again, it's somewhat similar, but, but also different. What is your advice to the future people who want to get involved in politics? I say this because politics is tough. Every day you wake up, challenge is this, challenge is that. People say horrible things. It's just, it's tough. What is your advice to the young person, the teenager, you know, between 13 and 19, who just wants, they want to get involved? What, and, and what is your advice to them? It's a similar question, but it is a little bit different. What is your advice to them? The first thing we got to tell them, everybody's not cut out for politics. Politics is brutal. It's vicious and it's savage. Trust me, when people come at me, I hit back 20 times harder and unapologetic about it. You're not going to bully me. I'm going to bully you first. But the fact is I'm going to show compassion and mercy to let you know that you are going the wrong way and we can handle things in a better way. The thing is, we must encourage them to be involved in politics, take them on field trips, let them be reminded of the history, let them know about the Constitution, let them know exactly what our forefathers and ancestors all fought for. They didn't fight for us to continue to be in slavery and enslave others. They fought for our freedoms, all of our freedom. Every single background has a story of where they was oppressed. The thing is, we must remember the past but we must respect the past and make sure it doesn't happen for our future. And that's exactly what new politicians or more need to know. Be yourself. Stop worrying about what people think about you and stuff like that. If you are asking for somebody to give you peace, it's always going to be the devil asking you for war. The fact is, we need to make sure our kids know just because you look different, just because you talk different, it is different that has made magic happen all across the United States of America. And that's why I'm so blessed to keep putting God first and knowing the devil is never going to win and is never going to take over our youth. And as long as we have bold leaders like me and so many others that have came before me and after, we're going to be okay. Trust me, 
as much as they talk about the world being bad or worse, no, we are much better than that time. It's about time we start saying out loud, America is great and is going to continue to be greater, and our future is bright. And the youth need to hear that more than ever. And right now, the parents are so scared because they're worrying about where their next meal is going to be at. They're wondering if I'm going to have a roof over my head. And this is being around kids without seeing this. And we must make sure we fix this mess because Northam put everybody in this mess. And the fact is, they are not talking about the issues that's going on with the poor because they don't want to cover it because it makes Democrats look bad. The Democrats have been invested in all of us being poor because when you're poor and desperate, you will take anything to eat, right? The same thing the Nazis did, the same thing any oppressor has done. You take away the means for somebody to survive, they're going to be basically, you know, cattle to you. And right now, I don't believe in any more cows running around or sheep running around for our kids. We need more leaders. And I know how America has always came back and it always has came back under God first and putting America first also, not other countries. And that's what we need to start doing, focusing on America, not on other countries' problems. And that's when we will start seeing a difference in how the youth see things when they know we are putting our best effort to make sure you know how to lead in the future. You don't destroy, you don't burn down buildings, you don't riot. The way to make change is from inside the system, not through violence. And that's what Martin Luther King Jr. would have wanted and I believe in fulfilling his dream fearlessly. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, very strong, very strong answer. Um, which uh, w reminds me in the beginning when I said, wow, I mean, just really strong answers from someone who's not establishment, who doesn't have a, a history in politics. Very strong answer. Um, so everyone, this Sunday, two o'clock, Crossroads Baptist Church, uh, uh, Merrill uh, will be there along with the other candidates. Uh, please show up. Uh, please tune in. Uh, Merrill, do you have any other um closing statements before we uh, head off? Yes, I do have a closing statement for everybody. I know the Republican Party is going through a lot right now, and I know we could blame the leaders and all of them for everything that's going on. No, it's our fault why they got to this point. We put them in, and now we're seeing what's happening because of that. We need to start focusing on winning. We only have a few months. And right now, even our top candidates is not even breaking past 25%, while McAuliffe is almost at 50%. At this time period, we need to come together. But we are not going to win any elections with the same attitude, the same type of procrastination or playbook is going to have the same exact results. We need somebody who is going to cross over and give out a message that's different than what it is before. We don't have to change our values. We got to change how we talk to people and how we treat people. The whole point is for us to have the conversation that Democrats have denied us in 2020. And the fact that we got to change up pointing the finger and start saying, we going to do what it takes for us to win and make the best decision in the nominee that can bring us home and make sure the Republican Party and conservative values are alive and well in this Commonwealth with protection, not with those who flip-flop. And we have to right now get on point to saying who can win in November. And right now, if you are fundraising your butt off and doing everything else, and you're not cracking anything over on the Democrat side or the independent side, that's going to be a problem going forward. And right now, I'm running as a general election type of candidate. I'm talking to any and everybody and they're giving out a different type of message that hits the dinner table. And that's exactly how we win elections, by making sure people know the truth from the liberal lies. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, Merrill. Uh, we look forward no to problem. seeing you on Sunday. Uh, fantastic. Uh, very great uh, interview. Uh, no I look forward to seeing you two o'clock. Uh, get there early at one o'clock so you can put your signs out or set your table up or do whatever you need to do. Uh, meet everyone, greet everyone. Um, no thank problem. you so much, Merrill. We'll see you no Sunday. Problem.
I look forward to it. See you later. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, everyone, that was Meryl and, and some fantastic, strong answers, um, strong interview, uh, very good candidate, strong candidate. Uh, we will see him Sunday, 2 o'clock, Crossroads Baptist Church. Uh, that is the conclusion for my interviews for this evening. Uh, thoroughly impressed uh, with our interviews. Um, thoroughly impressed with how that went. So uh, please, uh, Sunday, Spotsylvania County, Crossroads Baptist Church, 2 o'clock. These people are coming here to see you, answer your questions, um, and be there for you. So, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. So I'm Nick Ignacio, uh, and as you know, I am the chairman of the Fredericksburg Virginia Patriots, the regional Tea Party. It is my honor to serve you. I was elected in July, and I am running for the Board of Supervisors in Spotsylvania County because it's time for some serious change and not, um, you know, status quo. We need to get, get things going. So strong. You guys stay strong. This is my final interview for the evening, and I will see you guys on the front lines.